And welcome back to the Crochet Crowd Associates, my friends at yarninspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today is the Knitting Workshop. In this particular video, I'm going to put together all the things that you need to know to, in order to learn how to knit, including how to cast on the knit, stitch the pearl, and other little goodies that would just get you started right from scratch. So what I'm going to do is I will put in the video description, uh, video chapters, so that you can jump ahead if you already know something. And for now, we're going to begin. Now, some of the videos that you'll see are pre-recorded from other series that I'm going to put together with here. And so then you have everything that you possibly need. So, the so for the crocheters out there, I want to let you know, do a mind sweep right now. And I want to let you know that the stitching journey for knitting is not the same as crochet. So if you're looking for fast and, and just like quick, 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 maybe knitting is not for you. But I don't want you to be discouraged by that. My biggest thing, because I've been crocheting for 35 years, is that I have this need for speed, but the attention to detail that knitting can do that cannot be duplicated in crochet is second to none. And I have found with myself is that I'm really extremely proud after I get something done. And it's going to be stuff like this that you're going to be able to learn in the channel to build your skills. And so if you were looking for fast, dirty, and cheap, I don't know how that applies here. Um, maybe knitting is not for you, but if you're looking for more of an elegant look to some of your stitch work, knitting may be just up your alley. So I have found every time I'm finishing something, it's like I feel proud of myself. And it no longer for me is about the speed, but it's about you know the attention to the stitch work. And to get this level here, I'm less than two months of learning how to knit seriously, and I'm able to achieve this. It almost looks store bought. And because of that, I feel very proud of myself. But in order to get from two months ago to today, what did I have to do? Practice. So that is the key element. So remember, fast is not always best and practice makes perfect. Let's talk tools. Whether you're choosing the sticks, the circulars, double points, I have found in my experience so far, and I've only been knitting for about two months, is that the tools matter. So I was fighting and fighting and fighting learning how to knit with this one set of brand. And I'm like, God, the yarn just doesn't want to slide very easily. So I went and grabbed the different uh, knitting needle and it was like a completely new experience. It's like crochet. Sometimes there's cheap hooks. Sometimes there's more, inex or more expensive ones, ergonomics and stuff. The tools matter and not everybody enjoys the same thing. So if you find that you're struggling, Maybe not, it might not even be you, it might be your tools. And so you may have to just kind of figure out what you like the best, ask your friends on Facebook and see what their opinion is, or even here on YouTube. Next. So I'm pacing back and forth on the pegboard trying to determine what I'm going to use for my knitting experience. And what I'm looking at is circular knitting needles. I'm looking at the regular ones that I would normally see that I associate with um, knitting. I also see knitting ones that have two points on both sides. I'm really not sure what those are for. And then I'm seeing that there's different sizes. So it's an, it's like crochet in many ways. There's all kinds of different sizes of crochet hooks and so many different sizes of the knitting needles. So I found myself staring. I'm thinking where am I gonna start? So the actual answer is you don't start here. You start back at the yarn. So let's go back to the yarn and let's determine that before we go here. So the answer lies on the yarn that you want to use as your play yarn. So you want to buy yarn that's not too expensive that you're not concerned about ruining. So a lot of people say don't waste the yarn. You know what? You cannot help but waste yarn in the learning process because the fact is is that you're going to have to retry a few times in order to make it work. I highly recommend Bernat Softy Chunky Yarn because it is a thick yarn. And let me just uh, show you this in my hand. It's got a nice twist to it and also it's it's thick. So when I'm going to learn the process of of using this uh, yarn is that I don't have to be really dainty by using something that is ultimate, ult ultimately thin. Now the advantage to buying yarn like this is that this is made by the, a main manufacturer that follows the consistency of telling you exactly what you need. So more of the higher end yarns of the exclusive yarn they don't actually provide that kind of information that you're going to need in order to go back to the knitting needle shelf. So unless you're familiar with the yarn weights then that's going to be a little bit of a, a process in order for you to do. So what you have to do is you have to rotate the ball to this right here. And let's uh, just zoom in and show you what you're looking at. Now this here is telling the story of what you need for the yarn needles. So the knitting needles and you also have the crochet hook. Now for the crochet side I've always pointing at here but we're gonna go over here to the middle one. I know it might scare you a little bit. So this is telling you information that is really critical to the knitting needle sizes that you want to select. So here they've determined that an eight millimeter, okay that's a metric 
uh, uh, number or US 11 that's United States. So US 11 is the recommended size for this thickness of yarn. So the bulky is telling you what bulky weight that it is. Okay so this could be all the way from one to seven. So it's a number six and that's determining the thickness of the yarn. So you can also see the crochet hook while we're here. It's also an eight millimeter uh, also a US uh, uh, size L or 11 and then it has washing instructions just like so and this is telling you that it is acrylic. So what you have to determine is that this is actually telling you the gauge and we're gonna uh, talk about that in a future video but and actually a little bit in this video because we're gonna talk about a gauge tool but this is telling you how many stitches that it will take to go four inches across. So it's 11 stitches across and then it's 14 rows in the height in order to get a four by four inches. So it's a four by four inches square. So that's your gauge and most professional um, designs have the gauge and this kind of matches their gauge if it's done correctly. So this will tell you this is what I need. I need an eight millimeter or a US 11 knitting needle and now I can tromp back over to the knitting needles and then we can go and look from there. So in the knitting needle sizes you're gonna see an eight millimeter right here and you're gonna see a much thinner one here. Now that recommendation is just a recommendation. It is uh, what's recommended for that thickness of yarn but you can always change to go higher or lower. So if you decide to increase your your knitting needle size, your stitches will be looser, your project will be much bigger. So if for, for example you were doing a scarf, you used a bigger size than what was recommended in the pattern and recommended in the yarn ball, your scarf is gonna be a lot wider. Also it'll be a lot longer if you decide to make it as long. So if you go thinner then what's gonna happen is that there's going to be a lot uh, narrower. Okay so if you're following the exact same pattern and you use a smaller hook or a smaller knitting needle, the work is gonna be much uh, narrower in the width and it will take you that much longer in order to get the length. So you can I increase or decrease but when you do so it has a pros and cons. So whether you wanna be looser with a bigger or if you wanna be a lot more tight and, and you may struggle a little bit because especially with this size uh, then that's completely up to you. It's not abnormal but it is completely optional. So let's move over to the types of uh, materials used in a particular needle. There's a few types. So there's different types of knitting needles. So first of all we have bamboo or it could be wood and this is actually not a bad needle and the thing about it is that it's nice and light. So that's a great option but when it gets really thin like these, these kind of get brittle and unless you have a lot of, if you have a lot of uh, tension on your hands you could eventually snap it. So that's one of those things you have to understand your own um, pressure when you're going to do it before you invest in a thin one like that in wood. So then there's also resin. It's like a plastic and this is this one here and uh, what happens in this particular one is that it's durable. It's nice but they can be heavier than wood so they can actually make you a little bit more exhausted uh, with it but this is really quite common with doing the resin. Then you can also have a steel or aluminum uh, hook just like this and these are heavier than these two here and they have their pros and cons. So as far as warping when it comes to wood and such as bamboo if you don't store these properly what happens is that you can end up with having a slight warp in your project. You might see here because I've not stored it properly and I've had this many years but it's got a slight bend in it here. It's still usable for me but if you get a severe warp on this it gets really quite difficult to do. So you just have to be paying attention to here even the resin can warp depending on how you're gonna store it but then the, the steel ones here it takes a lot of effort in order to get the warp. So you have the, the ones for myself I'm going to be using resin throughout my uh, particular one here. Maybe as I get better I will go to the wood ones here but I'm going to try to avoid doing the aluminum or steel within today's uh, within this uh, particular series because I think that these two are my better options and that's more of a personal choice that's really up to me. So let's talk about the style of your knitting needle. So you can have a conventional one here. It's got one point and it's got a stopper at the end and you need two of those in order to play. So it doesn't matter at this point. We're gonna talk about the style and not the material of your, your particular uh, knitting needle at this time. So you use two of these in tandem with each other and the length of it determines on how much um, um, project can fit onto these things. So for example if it only is going this much I can't really get too many stitches on here. I could probably get a dishcloth on here pretty easily but once it gets a lot of uh, stitches then this one is no longer an option. Now you're going to notice that there's different sizes of this one and let me just uh, get another one here. I'm gonna slide it in just to show you how long it is. So here it comes. 
Yes, it's still coming, coming, coming. So it's much longer here. And there's a disadvantage to these kind of uh, knitting needles in the end. So what happens is, is if the, this distance is way too long, it happens to bang across things. It might bang on your legs, it could bang on your chest, could bang on a, on a sofa side. It can get quite on your nerves. So that's just one of the disadvantages of it. So you'll see different lengths that are available to you and you have to determine if you're in a position that you would rather use something more like this that we'll talk about because it's much shorter. So you have to really determine the length that you would really like to prefer, prefer to work with but it's then up to your project. So I could get this cloth on here pretty easily it would not uh, make much of a difference but if this was much longer and I was doing a dishcloth I think that would be kind of an in inconvenient thing for me. So let's move along to your next needle. So the next needle is a double pointed. So it's pointed on both sides and these are used for going in circular motion. So for example you're doing mitts or you're doing hats where it's a continuous revolution without a, a seam line then what happens is that you use multiples of these. So you're gonna use a, four of these at the same time. So three of them will be in a triangle format making the circle around and then the fourth one is the one that you're going to use in order to knit and you're gonna transfer the one to the other and knit and eventually this one will be empty and then that will be the new one that you use as you rotate around to then knit the other one. So you're always going to use three and the fourth is the one that you're going to knit with. Now there's another type, uh, type called uh, curved uh, double pointed needles and it's the same thing here but it's actually got a wicked curve to come in almost all the way back like a like a uh, like a Pac-Man uh, mouth. So it comes down and then back. That one there is also circular uh, uh, formation in order to work on the project and what happens is that you only use three of those. So instead of three three needles holding one project in that, in that particular configuration it will only be two and then the third one is then used to uh, be able to knit with. Now the advantage of the curved ones is that it doesn't stress the project because if you're going in a continuous circle and you're using straight lines it can actually provide stress to the project. So the curved ones provide a lot more relaxation to it. Take you a bit getting used to. If you've never knitted for the first time I would consider trying that first before these and going that method but again that's completely optional to you. So what did this one? That's next. These are called circular knitting needles. Now until yesterday I did not realize what these were for. Okay I always thought these were for making hats but I couldn't figure out that the distance of this cord was so big that it would be bigger than a hat. So I was kind of thinking how am I going to do that? That doesn't make any sense and my logic sense of reasoning to it because I think some of you are going to think I'm quite stupid. Um, but I was thinking that like loom knitting it has a contraption and you go around and I was thinking that it all continually rotates around these. That's not the case. So with the, these particular items here remember how I talked about the knitting needles being really quite long? Well instead of it being really quite long so you can have like a really really big one here and you could do afghans and everything like that but you know what? Are you gonna do an afghan on a, on a knitting needle that's four feet long? No, absolutely. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna use these instead and so you're, as you work with the project you slide the, the loops down and it catches onto the cord and stays on the cord. And so eventually you kind of just work it like you normally would of just doing your knitting but you push it down. Once you get to the end then you just turn around. So instead of having ultra long knitting needles the circular are the way to go because then it, all the project can rest on your lap instead of being rested on uh, being the knitting needles being too long. So this is more of a convenient way to knit uh, as far as doing any kind of distance works of afghans and etc. And I think that you would really quite enjoy this. So if, in my case if I were you I would consider getting a set of these prior to getting a set of the other ones and of course if you want to do round things like mitts and, and hats then you definitely have to do the double pointed uh, knitting needles whether that is a straight one or you want to try the curved. So this is what these particular needles are for. So let's move along and let's talk about tips of the needles. So let's talk about the tips of the needles and this is usually dep depending on the brand itself. They are pretty consistent among brands and crochet hooks are the same way when you're going to buy crochet is that certain brands have different shapes of the heads of the crochet hooks if you look at it right here. So I like the this type versus the ones that are saw cut. Now you're gonna notice that there's different types of, of uh, tips. 
Okay, there's gonna be more blunt ones, there's gonna be quite sharp ones and there's gonna be a variation of that. So what you have to consider is that sometimes these can be ultimately sharp in the sense that it's not sharp if you're, if you go like this and you're gonna bleed but what happens is that if your hands are brushing or your fingertips are brushing along the edge over time and it doesn't take a long time but you will get irritated that it's gonna start eventually kinda picking at you and maybe starting to scratch you. So you have to consider that and that's part of your yarn purchase when you're going to use this. So a, a sharper one has its advantages so if you're using a smaller um, thread size and um, you're using ones that like roving or anything that is requiring you to have a sharp edge then that's obviously advantage. So if your fingers are brushing up against the edge you're gonna have to change the way that you wrap it so that your fingers don't touch it as you go in order to prevent it. Now if it's more blunt like these things like uh, that would not bother me if I kept hitting it. Okay, so you have to determine the points and what I would do at the store is just kind of touch them. Look at the difference between the points because the points will probably make the difference of which ones that you select. Also you want to inspect your knitting needles as well so make sure that when you're doing it there's no burrs or anything abnormal on the tips. So just run your hands. If your hands are catching on anything then that means that it's got an imperfection and that I would leave it on the shelf and look for something else or maybe a, just a different package. So you want to make sure that the tips or anything along the sides here is not damaged so that you can slide yarn up and down and it's not snagging on any imperfections within the material. So let's look about, let's go and look at extra tools. Let's talk about tools. So the first thing is stitch knitting stoppers. So you're gonna notice that they're like a rubber thing and some of them look like socks. Some can be quite novelty but when you're not working on your knitting needles it's a stopper that you can put over top. For me I didn't think it was an emergency thing to purchase right off the bat so I left it on the shelf but maybe down the road I could do it. So after I've got my hardcore knitting done and I need to store it so I'm not quite done I would put a stopper over the edge. So if you were actually, it's got two advantages. So if you were storing it and you put it in a bag and you want it to carry it around instead of reaching into your bag and potentially stabbing yourself the stopper kind of protects you from actually scratching yourself in order to um, reach into your bag. But it also the stopper prevents the project from sliding off so if the, the project uh, like I saw in the in my other example here. So let me just show you here. So at the end of my work so I've got everything slid down but it's possible if you're not careful that you could accidentally slide this off the stopper helps prevent that. So that is one option and let's move along to cable needles. So here is a weird configuration here and this is a cable needle and what happens with these particular items here is that we want to have the stitches cross over top of each other but because knitting is all about consecutive stitches going across down the rod what happens is that you have to slide some stitches off, knit the next stitches and then slide the ones that you slid off in onto the onto the knitting needles. But if you slide it off and there's nothing to slide onto you can actually end up pulling out all your work. So what happens with these is that you, you slip it in and you slide the stitches on and the stitches rest in here and just hold. It allows you to work on the next part of the project uh, with just, just a few stitches and then you use this and you slide uh, the stitches off this again and put it onto the knitting needle so that you can knit with it. So it's more of a holder for you in order to do your cable work. There's different sizes available for you on this and there's also different shapes but this is generally what those look like. So those are cable needles and unless you're uh, gonna do cabling right away then that's something that you can wait for later. So this next one is called a stitch holder and honestly until yesterday I had no idea what this was. I, I really did not know what it, I thought I thought it was just a storage thing. I really wasn't sure. So anyway I had uh, my friend tell me what this is. So for example say in crochet we decide to do a vest. Okay and the vest has a break at the top of the neckline just like up here. Okay. So what happens in crochet we go along and then we go along and we just keep going back and forth and we refasten on and we keep going back. The problem with knitting is that you've used the same knitting needle to go all this distance. So even if you wanted to um, start going up one side you can't because it's the same needle that's holding everything. So you just cannot pull this needle out and just suddenly go here because all these stitches will be exposed and eventually come out on you like, like pretty much instantly. So what this uh, contraption is is that you open it and you slide the stitches that are gonna hold. So once you get to this part here you're gonna just uh, take your count and you'll slide all of these stitches onto this and you'll lock it just like this and then you'll continue to work in your project. So this would be probably more like this. Okay. 
So you'll continue to work on your project going back up like this and you'll get it done. So this is just gonna rest and hold all these stitches. Once you get this done what happens is that you can then open this up, slide these stitches back onto the needle and then continue the other side so that it's completely seamless so you don't end up having a spot. So with crochet you can fasten on and fasten off really quite easily and you barely notice it. Here with knitting you can't do that so you have to use the same needle so you just have to use this as a temporary holding device and these are available in many different different sizes and I found that there's different sizes within one package. So it depends on what you wanna do and I think this is quite a handy little tool. Again this is not an emergency uh, thing that you need to buy right away but it is definitely optional and hopefully you get what this means. So the next tool is a gauge tool. This is just a tape measure but I don't have a gauge tool here because I've never had to use one. So the reason for it is that you'll notice that the gauge tools have a circle uh, missing out of it and I'll have a dimension. So for example say here there's no dimension here on the knitting needle at all. What happens is that I can use that tool and stick this into a hole and determine its size. Quite handy if your, if your needles are not listed. So you can actually stick this through here and determine what the diameter is by sticking it in the gauge. So that's kind of handy. But it also has a gauge thing of measurement and there's a measuring tool on here. Let me turn this around. So there's a measuring tool on there and remember how I uh, said there's so many stitches for every four inches. So it'll have a, a sliding key here. So in the sliding key you lay it over top of your work and you're able to count how many stitches are across and so it's a gauging tool to tell you if you're on gauge or whether you're too loose or too tight. So it's a great little tool. It's not something that you need right away unless that your knitting needles are not listed with the size. That's quite common um, for that especially with the high end stuff but most of the general uh, produced items like the manu um, uh, big manufacturers they pretty well label up all their knitting needles. So it's a great little tool. Completely optional and you don't need that right away. And finally the last tool is the stitch marker right here. So these are quite handy and you kind of need these in order to keep count. You don't need these right away. This is something that um, you can wait for further on down the road. So if you have to go a certain distance like I talked about in that vest where you only go a certain amount you might want to throw in a stitch marker. So the stitch markers what you have to watch for is that they're not too heavy. They're really quite loose. They're quite, there's no sharp edges that's gonna ruin any of the fibers of your yarn and you're also gonna have to be able to close it or be able to clip onto it without, with ease without much um, to do. Now if they're too heavy what happens is that it pulls down on the yarn. So let me just get a piece of yarn here and just show you. So if it's just sitting on it great okay but if it's really heavy and it starts pulling on it you'll warp that stitch and so even when you pull it out it'll look like it's out of place and warped. So you wanna make sure that there's a lot of different novelty types of stitch markers out there and you wanna just pay attention to that and um, there's some really really cute ones I will not deny it. You won't need too many of these um, but it, there's packages that are just like a handful inside a package that's pretty much all you need unless you start losing them and this is a great little tool. So this is the basic run over over some of the tools. Um, there's also a tapestry needle. Tapestry needles are, are, are really quite handy in order to get the final string in. So if you do a project this will allow you to hide your loose ends from the beginning uh, that you left for the tail as well as the end and any imperfections that you had through it that you'd require a needle in order to fix. So this is a definite one that you would want to get right away. So, so right off the bat you'll need a set of knitting needles. You'll have to decide whether you're gonna go for the straight or the circular. I would go circular if it was up to me. You're gonna need a tapestry and then a ball of yarn and then you can start to learn how to knit and then everything else I showed here is almost optional at this point until you're getting more and more serious into your or into your knitting. So, so I'm going to take you to a pre-recorded video of the slip knot. You need to know this in order to get started with your knitting and that's next. So let's get our yarn ready. So there's no knots on this thing. So you don't tie a knot before doing this particular process. So let's say uh, for example somebody's sitting across the way from you and you're going to point. Okay so point at them just like this and I want you to turn your hand over like this. Okay I don't like to talk about guns but it looks like you're holding a gun. Okay and that's the way that I want you to put your fingers out like this. I want you to, so get your fingers like this so just kind of hold and I want you to grab the other strand with your fingers okay. So there's no uh, magic trick to it and I want you to pull it up over your finger okay and around once. Okay, do you want me to do that again? So pull it up over your finger and go around once like this. Okay, so the strand 
that's uh, that it, that is gonna be the straggler will be in front and the one is going to the yarn ball. Let me show you again. So coming up, go around your finger once. Now I want you to take your handle of your gun and open it up and I want you to grab onto both strands here. Now the way that I describe it is that this is the back of my hand and you'll see in tutorial format that I say that all the time. This is the forward of my hand. Okay, so back and forward. I want you to take this strand right here and move it up over to the forward. Not off, just to the forward. So take it up over like this and hold it. Okay, now pinching the other one I want you to take that one up and pull it over top of your finger and that is your slip knot there. Okay, so let me show you again. So you come up, you're pointing, you're gonna wrap. You're going to grab, okay, so you're gonna close your gun down on top of it, back of your hand, forward. Take the back, move it up over the forward, okay, and then take the new back one and up and over your finger completely. And that is your slip knot. So at this point you can slip in your knitting needle if you wanted to or your crochet hook, it wouldn't matter and that's what you'd be doing. So I'm gonna show you again. So wrapping it twice, grabbing it, back, forward. So take the, the back one, go partially over and then pinch the other one, go up, right up and over. And now you can insert your knitting needle just like so. So let me uh, show you that just one last time so you can just see, so you can just pull onto it here and it'll completely match itself. So let me show you again one more time. So just wrap around through and insert your knitting needle and then just tug. Okay, so that's how you do it. Insert. So now that you created the slip knot, you can slide that onto any of the needles that you have. And so we have to figure out, I teach traditional English style knitting. So I'm not a continental person. They say for crocheters that are coming over that you should learn continental. I think you should learn whatever you're most comfortable with. So I don't care which way that you decide to do it, but I am going to show you a traditional method and I'm gonna show you with my right hand. Now due to technology, doing a video flip uh, for a right-handed knitter to left hand for the video flip does not work like it does with crochet. So here on the channel, you'll only find right-handed knitting. But if you are left-handed, then you may have to just kind of improvise or find a different host for left-handed knitting. So I'm gonna show you how I hold my yarn for the traditional style. Today, I'm going to show you how to hold the yarn that leads to the ball in your hands. So, so what I want to do is that I want to get the yarn and I want to weave it through my fingers here. So my ball is on the right hand side. If this is the left hand side, it'll appear on the left. And what's gonna happen here is that the yarn is gonna be feeding through my hands and it's gonna be providing tension so that I have access to the yarn at all times. You will be faster with this. I know I am. And again, this is my own personal statement. It's all up to you. So like it's high tea, you wanna put your pinky in the air. So think about a cup of uh, cup of tea. You got your pinky in the air. You're, you're having uh, tea with the queen. What I want you to do is use that finger and I want you to get close to the knitting needle here and I want you just to grab onto it like so. So just put it over top and I want you just to circle your pinky around once. I'm gonna show this several times, okay? So see how close I am to the knitting needle? I want to do that so that I'm providing tension by the time I get through my hand. Now what I want to do is get my second finger up here and I wanna put it behind that finger. And now I wanna get my driving finger, okay, my middle finger and I wanna go in behind it, okay? And now I want to grab my pointer finger and be in front of it like this, okay? And eventually what I'm gonna do is that I'm just going to move everything to my proper tension and what's gonna happen is that I can use this finger now to circle around the tip just like this. Okay, so let's try that again. So you're having uh, Tay with the Queen of England and you're gonna get your pinky. You are going to circle around your pinky once. Okay, now you're gonna put your second finger in the, and so it's in, uh, the yarn is now behind it. You are now going to put your middle finger out and your middle finger will be, uh, uh, the yarn will be in front of it. And now you're gonna put your pointer finger and that will be in front of the yarn like that. 
and then you adjust and then arrow all the tension will be applying. So you can add extra tension here by uh, closing your fingers and by using your pointer finger just like so. So let me show you again. So you're going to just have high T with the queen. You're going to circle around just once. Okay, put your second finger out, let the yarn go behind. Put your middle finger out, the yarn will be in front and put your pointer finger and it will be in the back like so. Okay, let me show you again. This is all about how to hold your yarn. So having high T with the uh, Queen of England, wrap once. Okay, second finger is in front of the yarn. Middle finger is in, okay, is in and then your pointer. So high T and then just weave. Okay, do you get it? it? Takes a bit of getting used to. So now what's gonna happen is that the tension is going to be through your fingers. So it's not only gonna have to wrap around your pinky once, it's gonna have to squeeze through your fingers here and you'll have a nice tension. So let me put the knitting needle back of my hand here and we're going to knit using this method. Okay, so when we go to use this is that this finger here will have tension and this takes a bit of getting used to. So I'm gonna wrap, okay, and it's almost like crochet in a sense that the yarn is up and ready for me and when I need more, see, it just slides and it's pulling through my fingers as I knit. This to me is quicker than having to rest my hands on the hook or sorry, on the knitting needle and being able to wrap. So if I'm using the word hook at all, I just think I might be. It's just because I do crochet so often. So I'm going through like so and I'm using my fingers to kind of push. Okay. So this is how to hold your yarn. Um, this is the way that it took me a bit of getting used to. So my biggest thing for you is that you're gonna try this and it is gonna fall out of your fingers right at the base here. Okay, I have to tell you I'm on day number uh, five now. After day number three it was no longer falling out of my fingers. I think it's because I finally just relaxed and I actually just came to a conclusion. I was watching TV and I'm like wow I just crocheted for like an hour sorry I just knit for like an hour and it didn't fall out. And so what it is it's all the tension and it's the fear of it falling out of your fingers that probably makes it fall out. So it's just a matter of you'll find your tension. You will find where to put that ball that is off camera here. So if it's on the right uh, hand side there like it is for me because I'm right handed it will not fall out of your hands because the yarn is not uh, being pushed in a way that is going to be coming out the tips of your fingers. So that is how to hold your yarn and uh, it's a really quite a, a neat way to do it and for myself I can really speed up and do it this way without having to reset like my mom showed me. Her way was not wrong. It's just this way I think is better for my own personal choice at this time. So if I go back to the way my mom did it just uh, quickly review that. You see the difference? I like the idea of the other way better. So it's just a matter of getting uh, what you have to. So the Queen of England just wrap rents, weave through your fingers. Oops, maybe I should put it my hook and or my knitting needle in first. And you're good to go. So you've now done the slip knot. You now have to hold your yarn when you're going to feed it to your needles. And now it's time to cast on. So this is what is referred to as getting started. Now you're going to notice how I'm wrapping the yarn. That is my preferred method. There are other ways from pinch and throw and whatever you can come up with. So again, everything that I'm teaching you is just kind of a guideline. You have to figure out what is the best for you and what makes you the happiest. So let's learn how to cast on. I like to show you a long tail cast on using two needles at the same time. So I learned this last night with my friend Michelle. And so the long tail cast on requires you to have a long tail. So we're gonna long, 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 okay? And the distance of it is gotta just get yourself through the cast on process, okay? So what you want to do is that you want to have, this is going to the yarn ball here, and this is the tail. And what I need to do is that I need to create a slip knot first. Okay, 
and I'm gonna put that onto the needle. So I'm gonna hold the two needles together, flat, and I'm going to slide this in. And this is going to provide it so that it's an easier cast on process so that these things are not as tight. And so you're just gonna pull tight to the, uh, to the needles. So now what you're going to do, this is going to the, the yarn ball, this is going to the tail. You are going to just lay it down flat and just put your fingers down like this, okay? And slide underneath the V. Pick up your hand and flip over like this and pinch. I'll show again. So down, this is the tail end, this is the yarn ball. Fingers down and move in and open the V over top of your two fingers, your thumb and your finger. You're going to turn your hand over and just kind of push this down, pull it down a little bit and just pinch the two strands like this. And when I go to cast on, I need to take both needles and I need to go up under my thumb like so. And then on this finger right over here, I'm going to scoop around and pick up that. Okay, so you're just gonna pick it up. It takes a bit of practice. And then all I'm just gonna do is use my thumb and flip over and that becomes the, another stitch. And you can keep doing this over and over. So I'm gonna reposition just for your clarity reasons. So this is the yarn ball, tail end, go in, scoop, and hold. And so you're gonna take this needle and you're gonna scoop it underneath the needles and you're gonna scoop under your thumb here. Collect and then go around and put on and then use your thumb and flip this over. and then pull tight. And you don't have to keep resetting your hands each time. So you can just open up your hand and scoop and go around and put over. And to finish, flip over with your thumb and tighten. And what this is doing is it's providing extra slack in the stitch work itself so that the first cast on is not so tight. So a scoop from the palm to the thumb. This one goes over and flip. So go in from the palm to the end of the thumb around Flip over, tighten, open. So you just gotta keep moving it down. You gotta remember to flip that thumb. I'm gonna show you one more time and then I'm gonna show you something else. Just make sure that you're getting the strand in the proper order. Now, this is going to provide this. So say you were doing a hat, right? And you had like to do 40 stitches or 50 stitches, 60 stitches. You're not gonna to wanna to keep both needles in there. So all you're just going to do is just keep one needle only and remove the, remove the one out. That's not gonna impact anything. Put the needles back together again and restart and do another set. And what this is, so you want to do like a total like a 10 of something like that. And then you just keep on going. So instead of having both of the needles into the full cast on, you only want to do like 10 or so. And then just release the one needle out so that you have an easier time doing that. Okay. So then when you're ready to knit, you're then going to just remove the one needle out like this. And you can do this with uh, straight knitting needles as well. And so therefore the starting here will not be as tight. So when you go to start knitting for the very first time, that it'll be a lot easier to get your knitting needles into the first. And this does not impact 
the way that the stitches will behave. So I prefer uh, the twist and transfer, um, but this is a better way to really kind of start things on circular needles because the cast on is already kind of uh, flexible and easier to manage, but you have to decide what is going to work for you. Um, so now I'm gonna teach you the knit stitch. This is a basic stitch that you should know. And if you go back and forth on your knitting needle, so back and forth, you are creating what is called as a garter stitch. So if you knit across, turn around and knit coming back, it will create what is called as the garter stitch. Now, if you knit and just continue to go in a constant circle like you would on a hat, um, that knit stitch would then create the stocking knit stitch. And that's kind of a fun little concept. And that stocking knit stitch is traditionally what we see in our clothing. So let's learn how to do the knit stitch next. Knit stitch. Knit stitch is very common in knitting and is one of the basics and is the starting point of learning how to knit. So what I need to do is that I need to use both needles just like you see here and we're gonna play within each one of the loops that are on this needle and we're gonna transfer it over to this needle as we go. I want to explain what is happening with this particular finger that's waving over here. See? there I am. I want to show you exactly what's happening here because there's a lot more going on here than you realize in knitting. So you're going to notice I, I want to insert this needle that's moving okay and I want to insert it into the same loop and I want to insert it so it stays on the back side so it's underneath and when I go to do this like this you will see that it's crossing over and that it's completely in that loop. So before I knit I use this finger and I stabilize this loop and I just, you just happen to do it automatically but the first one I never usually do, I just do all the rest of them like that. So all I'm just gonna do is take the other yarn and I'm gonna wrap it over that back needle like this and I'm going to just bring it on through. So there it is on the needle coming through and I got it onto the needle and I transfer it by just sliding that off. So what's happening over here in this finger, watch this. So as I'm inserting it in, Okay, I put this finger behind this stitch to stabilize it. So I use it as like more of a pushing. So if you push something against something, it's kind of acting like a, as a counter push back in the other direction. So it makes it, so if I go like this without it, you can see that this uh, needle wants to go away. But if I put it, my finger behind it, it stabilizes as a counterbalance. And so I want to insert it into that loop and I counterbalance so that it just glides up over top of my finger and I insert in. So it's now in behind. So then the knit stitch is just wrapping around the back needle. Okay, and then just transfer it through. So just flicking it through. Now that it's through, slide it up of, of the needle. So with this, these particular stitches, I'm gonna move them closer to the edge and again, watch this finger and I'm just gonna kinda speed up a little bit. So I'm just gonna stabilize it, okay? So I go in and then I wrap in the back side like this and then I come forward and slide up. Okay, so stabilize, you push through, you wrap the back one Okay, you bring it forward, okay, and then slide. See I'm using this finger, watch that. So I'm stabilizing, I'm wrapping, I'm flicking forward, and I'm sliding up. So stabilize, wrap the back, flick it forward, and slide up. So stabilize, wrap, flick forward, slide up. So stabilize, wrap, flick forward, and then slide up. So you gotta keep sliding, so it's, okay. So this is related to the garter stitch. So the garter stitch in patterns is the same stitch. It's called the knit stitch. And what it is, is garters referred to as a term of the type of knitting. So if you go back and forth on the rows of just doing the same stitch back and forth, you get the same look of the project work that you see underneath right here. It's called the garter stitch when it, you continually do that. So the garter stitch really isn't a stitch. It's more of a process. And that's what you can see here is the garter stitch. So you see the, the typical lines looking like they're waving upside down. So as we turn our work, we just start. So when you go to turn your work, make sure that your yarn is on the outside like so for this particular stitch. Wrap and begin again. This is called the knit stitch. So again, back and forth is called the garter stitch when you're going to do that. Okay, so this is how you do the knit stitch. Let me just uh, finish off this row. 
and it's really not that hard once you get used to it. It's just a matter of the motion. I enjoy this uh, particular stitch. It's just really kind of a no-brainer and if you're just gonna go back and forth on the rows which there are a lot of projects like that it's really quite a simple pattern to be able to function with as well. You get that so it's the knit stitch just like that. Next stitch up is the purl stitch. Some people really do not like this stitch. I actually like this stitch. I find it easier to be able to slide the needles uh, around in order to get it to work. It puts the stitch work on the opposite side to the project that you're working on. So it kind of puts it onto the back side. So if you knit stitch all the way across and then purl all the way back, it creates the combination that is called as a stocking knit stitch or a stocking stitch. And that's traditionally, if you look at your socks, that's the kind of stitch that you're seeing. So that's a great way to get that look in going back and forth. And in the purl stitch, it's a really great thing to know. And it's something that's very basic. So let's begin. You're knitting. So what we have to do is that we have to watch for the purling. If purling is now on your row and that you need to start out with, you need to watch where the starting strand is. So in knit, it was in behind just like this, but in purl, it's in the front like this. So what I want to do is that when I go to insert, so when we did the knit stitch, we did it and the strand was in behind just like this. When we go to do purling it's different. So what we have to do is we have to make sure that strand, a strand is in front like so and all we have to do is then insert this needle instead of going through the back side like this we come in through the front side or front of the top like this and we go forward. So that this knitting needle is then on the front side and see where this strand is here? That's exactly where it needs to be. So you have to continually watch for that as you go. So I'm just resetting the yarn into my hands just like so making sure that the yarn is in front just like that. So what I wanna do is that I go to wrap this but instead of wrapping the needle and it's in behind it's I'm wrapping it and it's in front. So I just come around through the front like this and all I'm just gonna do is flick it backward like this and drag it. So now it's on the knitting needle in behind and I'm just gonna drag that stitch off like so. So to do the next one I come in through the top side like this okay and I wrap it it's on the front like this and then I go and flick it backward and then slide it off. So okay, so I go in through the front, I wrap and then I flick it back. So I just kind of slide up everything here and then I keep on going. So just turn into the top and wrap like this. Now if you did purling back and forth on your stitches as you go back and forth in the rows, you'll have the same look of doing the, the garter stitch because the fact is is that you're kind of doing the opposite to what you did with the knit stitch if you did back and forth using the same stitch. So there's a term called stocking knit. It's a stocking knit stitch and that term is referencing to the purling here being one row and then the knit stitch being the second row which was the most common element of knitting. It's called the stocking knit stitch and that creates a completely different look and if you look at a pair of socks uh, for example the way that it's done up on your on your in your feet um, you'll notice that it, that is the stocking knit stitch and, and really it's more, most preferred as well. So I'm continuing to purl here and I'm just wrapping through the front side and just keep on going. So now I've done this here. So let's just say I'm gonna purl again. So let's just turn our knitting needles and again. So do you remember what you have to do? So you have to keep this strand in front like so and so when you go to do this you make sure that that yarn is in front and you come in through the top side. Okay so this is see where this yarn is coming out of. So if it was coming from behind this needle I know that it's not gonna be done right and I'm gonna wrap and then go backward like this. So the next process is what if you wanted to change color? So in the next video we're going to show you how to change the color when you're at the end of a row or a round in order to just put it up to the next color. So you're going to find it quite helpful to know and if you ever run out of yarn midway through a project it's a great way to restart new yarn.
and that's next. Okay, today I'm gonna show you how to change the yarn color when it's at the end of the row just like so. We're gonna do another tutorial of what happens if you run out mid row especially when you're doing afghan work. So I'm gonna just use my example here. I, I was showing the garter stitch and the stocking knit stitch but now I wanna change my color. So just let's just say for example I ran out of this color and you can use any color. So if you wanna if you're just using the same color and doing the same process it doesn't matter. The color is irrelevant. So what I wanna do is that I wanna make sure that I leave about you know about 10 inches of yarn left at the end and all I'm just gonna do is snip it. So if this was almost running out at the end you can just snip it or if you're running out of yarn you can just do the same thing. Just make sure there's about 10 inches of yarn there. So what I wanna do is that I wanna start off with the next color right away and this tail is gonna be important because we're gonna use a darning needle at the end to be able to weave it in in and out so that you'll never see um, this particular uh, our, our, <laughs> this particular yarn strand. So what I wanna do is that I wanna take the next color and I wanna leave about equal amount of yarn that's left over so about up to 10 inches and all I'm just gonna do is that I'm gonna start off with that yarn to begin. So let's just do the knit stitch. Okay, so let's do this here. So actually an actual fact I'm gonna do this as a purl stitch because I'm gonna maintain the pattern here. So this here is that when I go to start it instead of using the yarn that I already have I want to start the yarn that I wanna change to. Notice that there's no slip knots or anything. Okay, it's just a loop and I wanna use that and I wanna put the loop around the knitting needle. So I'm just gonna flick it back like I would with the, with the purl and the very beginning one is gonna be really loose. You see that here. So what I wanna do is that I wanna start on to the next one right away and I want to stabilize things. This here will be secured afterwards so you don't need to worry about that too much and I wanna drop the strand that is leading to the end of the ball out of the way and I only wanna work with the strand that's leading to the yarn ball. So let's start begin to purling as normal. So if this was the knit stitch you'd still do the same thing. So I wanna use that strand to go around. So I wanna do a few more of these purls and if yours is a knit then you just do a few more and then you can just come back and kinda tighten things up at the front end of where things are. So you're gonna need a darning needle to kinda secure them at the end in order to kind of um, get them to be stable at the end. But you just wanna just kinda um, knit as normal so there's no change and I'm just using the orange color here to do so. So I'm just working my way across. Just like that. And so it depends how far you really wanna go. If you're doing an afghan you might wanna stop midway and just kinda look at things. So let's turn it around. So you can see now that the orange is now ready to go. So right at the very starting here everything's a little bit loose. So you just wanna keep things nice and tight and there's suggestions online that you can just uh, kinda secure it but you can actually just start securing things if you wanted to as well. So you can take the blue one here and all you can just do is just get a darning needle and the darning needle will help stabilize this thing and you're going to need to do it anyway. So you just get a darning needle and feed the yarn through. Now because this is knit and purl work the one side chances are will be um, this is the wrong side and this is the good side here. So I'm taking only the blue and I wanna kinda stabilize it and I wanna just travel on the on the fibers that are just on this side of the work. So I don't ever wanna dare go through the front side. If I turn it around and I see that needle in the front you know that you're gonna see this in the front. So you don't wanna do that. So you wanna go back and forth a total of three times a r in a row. So just going across and when you go to do that you wanna kinda get this first string to be relatively the same size of the rest of it. Okay and then you're gonna go back in the other direction. Now you don't have to do this right away. You can wait a few rows in order to tighten things back up but you just gotta really watch that first loop right there. So you're gonna go back a second time and then go back a third time. And again I'm staying on the on the back side of the work when doing this process. So the blue is now officially done and so I can just safely cut that down into the project like this. Okay so you barely see it even on the back side and you should not see it on the front side when you go to do that. So all you're just gonna do now is taking that same yarn that we're working with here and what we want to do is that we want to begin. So this side is that we're doing the knit stitch 
because we're doing the stocking knit. So let's just grab our knitting needle and we continue on with the new yarn just like so. So if you run out of the blue and you want to uh, reattach another yarn that's how you do it. You don't wanna ever create knots. I used to do that as a kid uh, when I was changing the yarn. As much as you wanna be careful the knot always seems to find its way to the side that you don't want people to see. So this will be a nice clean line of transferring from one color to another and uh, once I get a, a few more rows of the orange what I'll do is I'll go back and then I'll stabilize that, that beginning tail with the darning needle to trap it into position. But as I get back there now and it's still kinda loosely on the needle I wanna just make sure I tighten things up before I do it so that everything stays nice and balanced like so. Okay so the last one is it. Okay so I wanna kinda just make sure it looks tight, it looks consistent like the other one and just knit as normal. Okay so you see it's still loose here. So when I go to turn it around like so you still, still see it's hanging. So what I wanna do is that when I go to put a darning needle I'm gonna put it through the orange section here on the back side and then continue as normal then to be able to secure it down. Okay so this is how you would change color on the end of a row. So I'm gonna So now you know how to change yarn at the beginning or ending of a row. And so what happens if you run out of yarn midway through a row and you don't wanna rip it all out? What you can do is change the color or change the yarn midway through a row and you will barely even notice it. So let me show you the tips on being able to do that. And that's next. Today's tutorial I want to show you how to change the yarn when it's in midline. So for example say you're doing an afghan you don't wanna waste all the beautiful yarn it took you to get here if you're running out at, in a particular spot. So right now I have about, about eight inches, eight to ten inches left on the ball. So I've cut this purposely just for tutorial reasons but if, you've, if you're running out of ball uh, yarn you wanna leave about eight to ten inches left. So don't finish it all the way to the, to the stitch. So I'm gonna use a different color just to demonstrate on how we're gonna be able to do this. So I'm just gonna grab my blue back up and I wanna make sure that the strand is about eight inches long. Okay and I wanna just kinda loop it so there's no knots. As much as you wanna try to put a knot in to secure it you'll always see a knot. It seems to always work its way through the front of a project. So just take the loop and just put it on to there. So let's just start knitting first and instead of using the orange that we had been doing we drop it and we loop around the blue. The blue. Okay, so this will be the new orange ball that you're gonna work with and what you want to do is knit with that as normal. But wait, there's more. So pretend it's the same color. So you're gonna drop this strand and blue out of the way. So that will be orange technically. So you're gonna come into the next one and using the original one that you started with you want to reach around and knit with that one. Just like there. Okay. So now what you're gonna do is that you got two stragglers here. You're going to then continue along with the straggler that is the original here and the new one leading to the yarn ball. Okay so the straggler that you had already joined on already is gonna be just hanging out of the way. You'll have to secure that later. So you're just gonna grab both of the strands. Okay the finishing one from that one and the other one leading to the yarn ball and you wanna use those in unison then for the next stitch. So coming in you're gonna wrap both of them around the knitting needle and knit them together like this. Okay and they will stay together just like that. And you wanna continue then for about three stitches, maybe four it's up to you and you're just gonna wrap both of those. So this is getting both of those stuck into position as you go. Now if they're the same color the stitch will look a little bit thicker but in the long term it'll be um, pretty hardly uh, not, also not noticeable because it is they'll be the same color. So I've done three in a row and now I'm just going to drop the original one which you're almost running out and I wanna continue on with the other yarn. Okay so if it was the same color it would just be continuous with the orange. So I just wanna continue to wrap, get that out of the way and I wanna continue to knit as normal. So the trick is that, is that you have to uh, really concentrate on the ones when you come backward uh, that you actually have two strands working as one stitch. So coming around I'm gonna turn the work and I'm gonna do purling. Okay cause I'm gonna maintain this pattern. So uh, what I wanna do is come around and using that same yarn okay that we're working with now and we're going to purl as normal.
So right where the yarns look like they're belonging together we wanna keep them together for this particular demonstration. Okay, so these two, see how they're linked together? So you wanna insert them so you're going into both at the same time and treat them like they're one. Okay, so you keep doing that until, see, you can see that these are two separate and the only reason why they're two different colors is that I've used two different colors to demonstrate this technique. So as you notice is that the one strand is kind of linked into the other one because they were put together. So you're gonna have that strand that you started with is going to still be hanging out and what we'll do at the end is that we'll take a darning needle then and we will then secure it into position by weaving it in back and forth on the back side of your project. So when you turn it around you can see that this was the original strand that we had just uh, joined on and then this was the one that we went over top and then we started then with the blue here. So if you're using all the same colors it wouldn't matter you wouldn't really see any of that. So you just can continue to knit as normal and then all you just need to do in the back side here you will notice that you would have had the starting strand which is here. You'll have to secure that in with the darning needle and then this one here you may want to just throw it through a darning needle just to secure it as well. So you can just uh, uh, try this concept. It's not really hard and this is how you change uh, a yarn strand in the middle of a row. So, until next so finally last but not least here on the channel I want to show you how to cast off. So you're ending at the party. It's over. The cleaning lights are on in the pub. So what you want to do is learn how to cast off. It's also called as a bind off. Now I'm going to show you the bind off in knit format. Now the, the way that you bind off it can be different depending on the project that you have. So you have to pay attention to the pattern when they ask for that. So if for example say you've been purling and knitting or purl knit purl knit purl knit. When you do the bind off you're not going to want to just do a knit bind off. You want to do a, a purl knit purl knit in order to keep that going. So that's something that you should pay attention to the future so that you understand that the cast off I'm about to show you doesn't apply to everything and it may matter in the future. I'm going to show you how to cast off. So finishing off your project. Now this is just a garter stitch that you see here. So I'm just going to continue to follow the pattern in order to work. So when you're going to knit this particular item say for example you're doing a uh, knit two purl two knit two purl two you want to continue that same configuration but then you want to use the same concept of uh, putting the stitches over top of each other when you go to finish off. So let's show you how to cast off. To begin casting off what you want to do is that you want to knit as you normally were. So I'm just doing a garter stitch or a knit stitch right now and what I want to do is that I want to finish this off as I normally would. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to knit the first two stitches. Okay, so just coming through and I want to transfer that to the knitting needle that I'm working with in this hand right here. So I want to knit the next one as normal. So just going in. So if that was a purl for you then you just purl as normal and then you just continue to go. So now that I have two on the needle that I'm transferring to I want to carefully insert this needle here that I'm moving my finger to and, and I want to just reach up underneath and I want to pull on to that that first loop and I want to carefully with tension pull it over top of the other loop and so it goes over top just like that and then I can just let it go. So what I've just done now is that I've taken the first loop and put it over top of the second so that it, the second is now holding that loop. So we continue and we knit the next one as normal. Okay so let's put this back in and I knit and I transfer over and then I insert my knitting needle into the first one that is there right where this finger is pointing down to and I just carefully put it over top of the other one. Okay so I don't let that other one fall off the knitting needle and therefore it's getting nice and stuck and therefore it's now on. So knit as normal like so coming around pulling it through. Okay slide off slide the first one up over top of that one like that. So we continue just to knit across and then we just transfer the other one over the top just carefully. 
You wanna take your time when doing that because if you let things go it can get a little bit of disaster for you. So just take your time and transfer and then take the first one up and over. And you wanna go all the way down your project doing the same thing. Now for myself I have a big camera in front of me here as I'm filming. So it's a little bit harder for me to see exactly where I'm going. I'm watching myself through a monitor. So I wouldn't normally be this um, slow at doing so. But I don't mind it here on tutorial format so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just continuing to go. And I'm working my way all the way down. gets easier um, once you start finding your tension and how to do things. So I'm going into my last one here wrapping around pulling it through and then I'm gonna take that one up and over. So you have one last uh, one on your knitting needle. So what you have to just do is just trim this yarn here and then insert that yarn through this loop and then just pull on it snug and therefore that would be the end of your project just like so. So, th so this is the basic outlook for learning how to knit. I'm going to put a playlist available to, the, to you in the more information of this video and that was basically all the beginning stitches, different things that you can learn and all together you can just start picking up the skill by skill. My biggest lesson for you is that when you look at knitting, don't just say, okay, I did a niche cloth, now I can do a top. You want to build progressively. I've learned how to knit a few times over my lifetime and I always never get past the dishcloth because I look at something too big and then I quit because I've overwhelmed myself. So make sure that your next process and the next project you want to try is something a little bit more and then maybe the project after that has a little bit more and a little bit more so that you can continually add because it's really hard to look at a whole project and realize that everything is new and you have no idea if you're coming left or right or up or down. So make sure that if you're learning how to do this that you don't overwhelm yourself because that's what causes people to quit.